Parshas Vayeshev, Tovshinai Tes. As we move along now, just a couple of days before Hanukkah, Mirz Hashem, next week in Parshas Miketz, we will hopefully do a little more talking about Hanukkah. Baruch Hashem, the Ozen is here, eating the chon for Thursday night, and it makes us all very happy, Baruch Hashem. And the Sivah Shalom says from the Baal Shem Tov, that we really need to understand in this week's parsha that after all is said and done, he goes on the pasuk in Tehillim of Torah's Hashem to Nemo. That after all is said and done, and after all the explanations that we have about everything that goes on in Parshas Vayeshev, still Torah's Hashem to Nemo, the Torah and its contents remain absolutely complete and intact. In other words, as much as we try to explain, and as much as we try to say about this week's Parsha, it still remains intact, which means we haven't even been able to touch the surface of explaining the complexities of Parsha's Vayesha. And as much as we learn the Torah, and we feel that we have things figured out, sometimes we really, really have not done that. And this is especially true, really, in our Parsha. First of all, everybody knows the, the Misa, the story, or if you could call it a story, that happened with Yosef. Mechiras Yosef. How do we understand Mechiras Yosef? How do we understand that the Shvatim, the Shifte Ka, how do we understand that they did that? that they wanted to kill Yosef. And, they, and now that they actually did not kill Yosef, they actually sold Yosef. These things are just difficult to wrap our brain around it. It's tough to understand. But the shift they come, want to kill somebody, they take another person and they sell them. And it would seem that the Shechino was even, was mitzta, they were mitzahar of the Shechino, with them on this. And, and that's also something very, very perplexing. How did that exactly work out? It was the Rots and Hashem that Yosef should be sold. So too, as in Siva Shalom, how was it that Yaakov Avinu loved Yosef more than any of his other children? We know the Gemara, Mosef the Shabbos, the Afyudom and Beis, tells us that Laoilam always al yishane odom benoi bein habonim. Good advice for parents, parental advice. The Gemara tells us, Chazal tell us, that a person should never differentiate. Don't give preferential treatment to one of your children. That's a clown. Everybody knows that. You can't do it. You just, you just can't do that. How do we understand that Yaakov chose one son, Yosef, whatever you want to say, that Yosef was Rachel's son, and whatever, but the bottom line is that there were 12 Shvatim, and Yaakov Avinu chose one child over all the other children to show favoritism. Another question the Siva Shalom asks, how do we say, the Pesach tells us, by Yikanu Vayecha, who is jealousy, by Yisnuoisoi, they hated Yosef. Come on, Let most ask the average person: Do you really, really hate somebody? Is it possible to be so jealous that you really hate somebody? And even if you say it is possible, to people, but once again, by the Shvatim, we should talk about Kina. We should talk about Sina. I mean, these are the Shifte Ko we're discussing here. And Kina, the Mishnah Brachay always tells us that Kina is one of the things that are Moitzina Sa'adam and Oila. It's a horrible, horrible need to, to be jealous of somebody else, to have kinah. And, well, this, and this is how we, this is what we describe the Shvatim with, they had kinah on Yosef, by Yisnu Oisoy, that they hated him. And this was all in response, says the Nesiva Shalom, of Yosef, they felt that Yosef had spoken Lush and Hara. Lush and Hara? Yosef, Hatzadik, Yosef spoke Lush and Hara. How is that possible? The Yosef spoke so basically we just asked a question on every single little step of the way at the beginning of this parsha. And to us, it just makes no sense. We don't understand the hate, 
the jealousy, lush and hara, the Yaakov favoring the son, the selling Yosef, wanting to kill Yosef, none of this makes any sense. How do we go about this? So the Shiva, the Shiva Shalom tells us that in order to understand this, we need to first understand something very fundamental about the Avos. The Avos were on such a high madrega of being connected to Hashem that they're doing the ruts on Hashem was not intellectual anymore. It wasn't because they understood or they thought something. It wasn't like we do today, like most of us are. Intellectually, we understand that we want to serve Hashem, and that's what we do. We make a conscious intellectual decision. It says, by the Ovois, they were so connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that it's not intellectual. They're, what, the way it works is when someone's so connected that your limbs, the limbs of a person, are trained to do the Ratz and Hashem. They do it on their own without even having to think about it. And when somebody, when one is so pure and so connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, even their limbs, which are totally Gashmias, even the Gashmias part of themselves, even their limbs, naturally, they follow the will of Hashem. And not what you might think is the will of Hashem, but you're so connected to Hashem that your limbs absolutely, naturally go ahead and do what the Ratz and Hashem is. And he, and he brings a raya from the Akedah. He says, you know, by the Akedah, the Pesach tells us that when Avram Avinu wanted to go and he pulled out a knife and he wanted to do the Akedah, he wanted to shech, unbelievably, Yitzchak, his son, the Torah tells us, by Yishlach Avraham, as Yodoy, Avraham sent out his hand, and then, by Yikach Esamacheles, Lishchelis Benayim. Avraham Avinu sent his hand to take the knife to Shef Yitzchak. The question is, what is by Yishlach? Do you know anybody who sends their hand? I mean, you want to move your hand, you move your hand. What do you mean you sent, Avraham Avinu had to send his hand, what is it, excuse me, hand, go ahead and do something? It doesn't work that way, right? Our brain tells our hand to move, and we move instantly. What's going on? Answers to the Siva Shalom that the hand of Abraham Avinu would not move. It wouldn't move. You know why? Because Abraham Avinu, his limbs were so trained to do the Ratz and Hashem, and we know that the Ratz and Hashem was that, of course, Yitzchak should not be shepherd. We know that the Ratz and Hashem was that nothing should happen to Yitzchak. That Yitzchak should walk away from the Akedah. So being that that was the ultimate Ratz and Hashem, Avraham Avinu's hand would not move. It would not pick up the knife to bring it to Yitzchak. So by Yishlach Avraham, as Avraham had to send his hand, his hand would move. Avraham had to physically send his hand to go do it. And we know ultimately that he was stopped by the Malach, by the Baruch Hu, but the bottom line is, he brings the riot, and that's the way it was by the Akedah. And here, in our parsha, in our parsha, by the seemingly incomprehensible events in our parsha, we have to say a similar thing. We have to say the same type of reasoning. There had to be a Golos Mitzrayim. Avraham Avinu was told by Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Avraham Avinu was told Ki Ger Eretz Your descendants will be. They will be in a land that is not there. Your descendants will be in Mitzrayim. That they're going to be work. They're going to be slaves in Mitzrayim. And it's going to be painful. There's going to be a goal in Mitzrayim. And Avraham Avinu was told that. However, Yaakov Avinu could have gone down to Mitzrayim the way it should have been, is that Yaakov should have gone down in chains. In Shalshel Shel Barzel, they should have gone down in chains like slaves. However, but in order for Yaakov Avinu not to have to go down to Mitzrayim that way, to go down with dignity, the only way was that Yosef was going to become the ruler of Mitzrayim. Yosef was going to become the second in command. He was going to become a king of Mitzrayim. And once Yosef, if the will of Hashem was that Yaakov should go down with dignity, then Yosef had to become a ruler of Mitzrayim. And the Shabbatim did not have a choice anymore. 
They didn't have a choice. They had to sell Yosef, and Yosef had to make it to Mitzrayim. Oh, we have a question. How could the Shvatim, how could they sell their brother? How is it possible? They didn't have a choice. They didn't have a Bechira. The ultimate will of Hashem was that Yosef should be the ruler of Mitzrayim. That's the way it went. They had to. Their limbs just went ahead. Their bodies went ahead, took Yosef, and sold him. They had to sell Yosef until he got to Mitzrayim. And Yaakov did not have a choice either about loving Yosef more than all the other children. The kinna that we asked about, the sinna, that was also without choice. The brothers didn't have a choice in the matter. It was all playing into the story, into the course of events that was being orchestrated by the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So we asked, how did Yosef say, Russian and Ara, Yosef didn't have a choice. He had to say what he had to say because the events had to play out that they would be upset and they would hate Yosef and they would sell Yosef and Yosef would make it ultimately to Mitzrayim because this was the will of Hashem and to somebody whose mind is so pure and you're so connected automatically, automatically you do what Hashem wants. And that is also why Yaakov, the Torah tells us in our parsha. That when they came to console Yaakov because they said the Roy Tarat Yosef that Yosef was ripped apart by an animal and Yosef was dead and they thought Yaakov would not accept any condolence. You know why? Because if Yaakov accepted condolence, Yaakov was coming to terms with the fact that the plans for Yosef to be the ruler of Mitzrayim and the goal of Mitzrayim to play out the way Akash Baruch Hu wanted, Yaakov would be saying that those plans are over. There's no Yosef anymore. So by Yimoheim Le'isnachem, Yaakov Avinu could not accept any condolences because his body wouldn't allow it. He was so connected to Akash Baruch Hu, and the will of Hashem was that Yosef should be alive. That Yosef should be in Mitzrayim. So Yaakov Avinu could not accept any condolence because it wasn't the plan of Hashem. The will of Hashem is what Yaakov had to go along with. And that's really the way we need to approach the questions that we have on this parsha. the questions. There are so many questions. It's so hard to understand, but there's really one answer. Nobody had a choice. There was such tzaddikim. They were so connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that even without knowing it, without consciously thinking about it, they went ahead and they did the Ratz and Hashem. They wanna, went ahead and followed the will of Hashem. And every one of us, though we may not be able to reach that Madrega, but the closer we are and the more we do Avayda Hashem, the more we're in tune to really what Hashem wants from us and the more automatically we follow the Ratz and Hashem. And that's really the lesson of this week's Parsha. And the Ritz Hashem next week will be in the middle of Hanukkah. We'll talk more about the themes of Hanukkah and we'll have a very, very special share next week, Thursday night. I think it'll be 10 o'clock. We'll see how it works out with the Hanukkah schedule. But we look forward to our Hanukkah share next week. Have a wonderful Shabbos.